Hey guys, what is up? Tom Spark again, back with another video. Today we're going to be checking out OVPN and putting it in the 2.0 rating system. Now, OVPN was a pretty high rated VPN in my last tier list. It's a really cool company and a good product in a lot of ways, but this new 2.0 system is very strict. Um, we're going to see OVPN do extremely well in some areas, and in other areas, not do that well at all. So, just kind of take this review with, um, depending on your use case, you know, it could be a very good product or it might not be the right product for you. So take that into consideration. If you guys want to use my recommended products, I would recommend S tier products that are the best combination of pricing, speeds, performance, and stuff like that. You'll find those on the tier list, vpntierlist.com. Um, VPN tier list 2.0 is the new rating system we're doing. VPN tier list 1.0 is fully complete, perhaps like 70 re VPNs reviewed, and it's still a good source of information there too. And you can also find some uh, recommended affiliates in the description down below that I recommend you guys to use to further enhance your security and privacy. Anyways, guys, let's get into the review right now. So, guys, OVPN's pricing policy is as follows. For one month, it's around $11, which is more expensive than what we're looking for. We like to be $6 to $10, under $10. Um, six months is going to be around $41.94, tw charged twice a year. Um... You get multi-hype, I guess. It's not included within the main package. Not really sure why. For 12 months, it's going to be around $60 um, with a 10-day money-back guarantee, not 30-day as we are looking for. And then we do see some kind of summer discount going on for $120 every two years. So they do fit the one-year asking price. They don't fit the one month. For two years, we're looking for under $100, so they're not going to fit that there. There is no three-year plan for $120 either. There does seem to be some kind of discount going on, but I don't think it's like super exclusive per day. This has probably been going on for a couple of months now, so I don't really have any problems with that. Not anything like a really bad timer. Um, in terms of simultaneous connections, we can only see four simultaneous device use, which is definitely a little bit low, definitely a little bit disappointing there. So OVPN does have some work to do, I think. I do like that they aren't like trying to trick you into any sales. There's no price increases, but across the board, they are a little bit limited and a little bit expensive, I think, um, especially for the simultaneous connection use, small refund policy and stuff like that. So I definitely think there is some work to be done if they want to be more competitive with some of the other VPN providers out there. Stuff like Cactus VPN, TorGuard, and WeVPN, I think, have some of the best pricing models out there for sure. So guys, what about OVPN's application? Now, OVPN does kind of have an interesting application. It's very simple, um, but I do think it is missing some kind of things. Um, the good news is it does have some fundamentals, like it has wind tunnel, or like I guess it's like this way, this application's way of showing you have WireGuard. Um, wow, I have 97 days subscription. I thought I just bought one month. Um, I might have to look into that. But outside of that, it does have browser extensions, a decent interface. It also has a kill switch, which is good. That said, it is lacking some other things, namely ad blocking, split tunneling, Fire Stick support. It also doesn't have support for Linux GUI, DNS controls, SOX5 proxy, or dedicated IP support. So it is missing some of those compatibility things. I think it does nail the fundamentals and it has a decent application, um, but could use some extra oomph for some of those things people might be looking for. All right, guys, so we are now connected to OVPN and we're going to be doing a live speed test. Now, remember, if you don't see a live speed test on other channels or websites, chances are the speed test could be faked or pushed to fit some kind of narrative to recommend you a more expensive, more profitable affiliate related VPN instead of the one they're actually reviewing. So that's why we always do live speed tests here on the channel to show you unbiased results and real speed tests. Um, right now, OVPN is not really loading the speed test. I'm not really sure why. It does seem like we have some kind of connection. Um, let's go ahead and reload the page and see if it works then. Um, let's see if it works now. We are still connected. So for some reason, I couldn't get speedtest.net to work with OVPN. I'm not really sure why that would be. So we're going to be trying another reliable website. Um, I usually kind of like to use the same website to get the same kind of benchmarks. Uh, speedtest.net does seem to give me usually pretty good speed results. Um, even though I'm not a huge fan of the ownership of the website. So here we have OBPN, and this is kind of the speeds we're getting. One thing I've noticed with this website is that we do get slower megabits per second than speedtest.net. I'm not sure why that is, um, but these are the current speeds. Um, so it is a little bit hard for me to kind of judge this metric against the other speed tests. Uh, we might try to do another speed test on speedtest.net to see what kind of speeds we can get. So I am going to load that up again to see if it works. Um, it does not seem to be connecting for some reason. So let's go ahead and move on to the torrent test. 
All right, since that speed test on that test did not work, we are now doing the torrent test. Ideally for a very fast VPN, we'd like to see, see anywhere between like 50 to 90 megabytes a second download. And right now with uh, OVPN, we're seeing a decent performance, but nothing top tier yet. Um, right around this peak was pretty good. If we had seen a more consistent peak going up from here onward, that would be really good. Okay, that's not bad. We got a good peak there. Um, around 45, 56 is very solid. Um, 54, very nice. So we are seeing more of that consistency now. Um, overall, these th 60, that's pretty good. So overall, this speed test is actually not too bad. Um, we haven't seen quite the some peaks that we've seen with some other VPNs up in the 90s, 70s. Um, but overall, 40 to 50 is still very solid. Um, so overall, not bad speeds from OVPN. Um, not like 5 out of 5, but still pretty good. I'm going to give them 4 to 5 for this speed test. And maybe something like, uh, it's a little hard for me to judge that speed test because we couldn't get it working with speedtest.net. Not really sure on that one. I had to decide at the end of the review. So guys, probably one of the best things about OVPN is that they have a very solid company. I've even interviewed the guy himself who runs the company, David. Really cool dude who really seems to care about privacy and it shows in the back end of this business. You can see here from the black light, OVPN passes it with flying colors, not having anything tracking you on their website, which is amazing. Hardly any VPN so far have been able to pass this. Really the only VPN so far alongside OVPN has been TorGuard. So OVPN, really good job here guys, excellent. Not only that, but OVPN also passes the Exodus tracking test with only zero trackers on Android and only five permission counts on Android. That is simply incredible. Probably the best performance I've ever seen on an application for the Exodus tracking test. Five permission count is insanely low. Zero trackers. This is an excellent work, OVPN team. Not only that, but OVPN has an amazing track record fighting against some of these cases, refusing to give up logs, which is very nice. Um, the company itself has also never been acquired, sold around, or anything like that. There's never been any data scares, and in fact, things like this just show you the company is going to protect your data, and it doesn't really collect any data to speak of anyways. So there you go. Definitely a trusted VPN provider. Really the only improvement I could see with OVPN is that they could add more two-factor authentication methods on their website. They do kind of have some token method where you can't really create a support request without some kind of token, but I don't know if that's quite the same as two-factor authentication with the website. They do have a lot of like captures and things like that to prevent like brute force probably. Um, so that is good. Um, but I think more two-factor authentication methods would give them a perfect score in the privacy audit. Overall though, a really good job here. So it does appear that OVPN has live chat, but during normal PST hours, it doesn't seem like they are working, which is a little bit odd. Um, I would like to see a little bit more better performance there. Don't know if I can give really too much points for live chat because this is like the basic hours. Um, but for you people in Europe, maybe you'll get a little bit of experience there with that live chat. So gonna have to kind of give them a little bit of a mixed score there. And we'll have to see how quickly they respond to our support ticket. Unfortunately, OVPN does not seem to be working with Hulu. It also doesn't work with Netflix as I can't see the green zone. I did make sure to enable the streaming service functionality within the client, but that still did not get me access to any of the streaming services. This is just showing me Netflix originals. So that's definitely a little bit disappointing. In the past, uh, OVPN has worked with some streaming providers, so I'm gonna make sure to test them all just to make sure here. The good news is it's not broken with all of them. It does work with Amazon Prime. However, it doesn't seem to be working with HBO now as I am getting a server error. And lastly, just to round things out, it doesn't work with BBC iPlayer either, unfortunately. So guys, thanks for making it to the end of this OVPN review. I've given them their fair share of criticism here in this content, but I think they are overall a good company. Is it the right product for you? Well, maybe not. Um, in terms of pricing, it is a little bit pricey, um, but I do like how they don't have any tricks and stuff like that. The company itself also has like an honest way of talking about its product, not overselling it, which I really do like. For example, if we look at the support section, you can even find in the introduction email that they say flat out, we don't offer 24 seven support, but when they do answer your tickets, it's gonna be someone who actually knows what they're talking about. That's kind of a refreshing take and I do like that about them. They do have live chat, but not tons of hours. So I give them a little bit points there, but not full points uh, because in the PST, it doesn't seem to be operating during that kind of normal time period for me, which is a little disappointing. 
We also didn't get a support ticket within one hour, so that's also something to consider for people who are extremely impatient. Um, impatient. Another thing is, is they're not really that reliable for streaming. As of right now, it seems like most of the major providers are blocked with OVPN, and I would be cautious to say that they're gonna fix it really soon. Um, traditionally, OVPN hasn't really um, worked with every streaming provider in the past, and um, I don't think they're gonna be able to fix that really quickly, so it's definitely something to consider. If you're someone looking for a really good streaming VPN provider, even though the website itself does kind of market it as such, it wasn't working right now in my tests. Fortunately, other areas OVPN does pretty well. It's actually a pretty fast VPN for torrenting, getting decent speeds, not top tier, but pretty close to it. And, the, and it also does have port forwarding. So that means that it is a pretty good torrent VPN provider. Um, the only bad thing is it doesn't have SOX5 proxy support. So that is also a little bit of downfall there. The, the best thing about OVPN probably is the company behind it and their privacy practices. They do probably one of the best scoring um, in terms of privacy audits we've seen here on the channel. They only really need to implement better two-factor authentication methods. Beyond that, though, they have open source analytics. They pass the black leg test, pass the exodus test. They don't collect logs. Um, they've been tried and true and not given away data or had a data leaks. No company acquisitions. It's run by a very small team of guys that are pretty cool. So overall, OVPN is one of the lower VPN uh, VPN providers here on the tier list. Actually, probably the lowest one rated so far. 27.28. This is partly due to um, its streaming compatibility not being very good, the high price point, um, and the application, which is very basic. Outside of that, though, it is a good VPN if you value privacy and you want a pretty good VPN for torrenting. So even though the score isn't as high as some other VPNs out there on the list right now, like Atlas VPN, Pro, uh, Proton, IPVanish, Express, Nord, and some of those ones that have higher scores, I do think OVPN for me is a kind of more of a preferred product with how they do things they just kind of aren't that big of a company and there are some downfalls um, due to that i think um, that said it's kind of up to you what you value this could be a good product for you guys and if you do want to buy it find the link down in the description down below anyways guys thanks for checking out this honest review of ovpn and i'll see you in the next video very soon